Okay. I think we're live. I'm just going to check. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Do I need to press got it? Yeah, I think if you've got a button to press, please do press it. Okay. <laughs> that um, makes me giggle already. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Courage, Dear Heart. This is Charlie Wall, and I'm joined today by the very beautiful Lucy Jones. Welcome, Lucy. Hello, the very beautiful Charlie. <laughs> Lovely to be here. Well, thank you for agreeing to let me interview you for the group and for my podcast. I'm really, really grateful. But before we go into that, um, you know the question I'm about to ask you. <laughs> go on then. What does courage mean for you? So I was thinking a lot about this and then the thing that really came up and the thing that I think I've tried to hide the most is being vulnerable and vulnerability and what being vulnerable can potentially expose myself. Mm -hmm. Fear of ridicule, fear of being judged, fear of being attacked, fear of being trolled. Um, all those sorts of things that for a long time kept me very hidden. But now I've sort of reached a part where I kind of see a strength and a beauty in that vulnerability. And I feel that if I can be vulnerable then if it could maybe resonate with someone else, then even if I'm attacked by the masses, if one person gets something out of it, if then that's vastly more important. So for me, it being really open about my experience and not feeling the shame I around it very long. So it's taking you a lot of courage to come in and do this interview with me. Yeah. Yeah. Hence why it took a while, Charlie. <laughs> Yeah, but do you know, as time goes on and as things have shifted, it, thanks to your coaching, I'm less scared of being exposed. I realise that a lot of it's made up in my head. A lot of it's paranoid fantasy. It's just, and I can't ultimately change what anyone thinks about me. So it's pointless trying to people please and do what I always used to do because it's, my projection onto others isn't true anyway. It's only my projection. Mm. So what, tell, tell us about that, because we'd love to hear, you know, what life was like before you, you came into my community, before you started one-to-one -one coaching with me. You mentioned how I used to be. What, what was that like, Lucy? So I would say that I had quite a turbulent, often traumatic childhood. Um so I was constantly in a state of hypervigilance, fear, almost dreams of feeling. So things would either be really happy or really bad, or I never knew what it was like just to be on that even keel. And so when I actually went out into the world as a young adult, I just was not equipped to deal with life because I had never seen what a safe environment was like and so my mind magically made ways of escaping my experience which included a lot of eating disorders a lot of addiction, um a lot of withdrawal the worst kind of um self-loathing horrific um intrusive thoughts for me because I had this fear that I would do something really reprehensible and I believed that my mind was telling me the truth um, and I struggled for years I got chronic illnesses so I was covered from top to toe in eczema so my skin would literally weep and get angry and just fall off so I couldn't hold down jobs um, I had years of therapy I lost all my hair and I don't mean just patches, I mean the worst kind of alopecia you can get. 
Matt Lucas, Gail Porter, that's what I was like for years, had to wear wigs. Um, and I was just petrified of life. And then I would get little breakthroughs, but then the anxiety would come. And it culminated around three and a half years ago, around COVID time, where just a lot of things happened all at once. And I had a nervous breakdown. And it took, it went on for months. It was horrendous. I had to price things out. And I just so it eventually culminated in me going into psychiatry. We voluntarily, although had I not gone voluntarily, I think there was a chance that I would be so cripplingly depressed and anxious. I just couldn't function. And it was like my brain just shut and exploded. And so three weeks in that psychiatric unit, when I first got there, I was just, how the fuck has this? I was seeing people having full cycle. So it, it was just crazy. But in the end, it was actually a really beautiful experience. And I saw the humanity in everyone that was underneath and at the heart of, well, underlying all the, the mental psychological going on. Anyway, I'm going a bit off piece. So I came out. Um, given loads of Valium, kind of pretty much dropped and left by the system. And so I'd looked at the three principles before. I worked with Jason Chires when I was at my most ill. So I remember ringing him in the middle of one of my episodes and him being on holiday and taking my call. And he was, and then somehow I came across you, <laughs> divine. <laughs> intervention who who knows but something in the way that you taught something in the way that you were something in your experience that really related to the things the the, the level of chronic fear and stress I got that and I could see that you'd found a way out of it and I wanted to look that and a year plus later, I don't know what's happened to me. I'm just this chilled, like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, my house is a mess, whatever. It's just everything that I used to control. And I, I don't seem to push against the tide anymore. I feel a bit more flowy with life. And I can't even, it's a really difficult thing to explain because these insights often are invisible and then you just realize a few months later oh my god I'm doing that thing that I never thought I could do or oh how mm. easy I'm finding this and it wasn't that I had to take a massive step it just kind of although there have been times when I have had to make massive steps and face that fear, but a, a lot of things it's just like oh here I am now that's not to say my life's perfect and I'm just sort of floating around. I'm still very human and have good and bad days, but I'm not incapacitated by them. I don't have the intrusive thoughts. If I do have horrible thoughts, I know not to take the content of them seriously. I, um, I just know that I'm a bit off balance and actually to remove myself from it rather than going on that hamster wheel of trying to make it hope that is clear oh gosh no, it's very clear and very mm. articulate and very beautifully expressed um so you embarked on a year with me right it followed by me coming down to stay with you and nearly breaking your fingers <laughs> Anyway, that's for another day. Well, we'll see. We might get time for to go. <laughs> so you are a qualified yoga teacher, right? I am, yes. Yes, I am. And when we first met, what was the thing that you wanted more than anything? To teach and to believe that I was worthy of 
teaching and uh, that I deserved to do something I loved and that I deserved to be out there in the world because a lot of my negative inner critic was, who are you? Who do you think you are? Why would anyone want to come to see you? Or the opposite, people just think you love yourself or... Um, so it's sort of swung between who are you and what will others think? They'll probably think you're a knob. So <laughs> <laughs> a bit in the workings of my brain. Um, yeah. So it it and I'd hidden away so much, and it's actually really exposing because it's a bit like you're on stage which you will know about yourself. Um, but yeah, it was a massive one for me. I had massive imposter syndrome, didn't I? I had massive, I mean, when I came to you, I was like, I felt really broken. It, 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 it was so frightening that I would ever, ever, ever go back to that place. And so even just functioning moderately okay, felt like a tall ask it was more about can I just actually be well never mind then embarking on a new career but something shifted like you said it would and <laughs> but it took it you know some things were natural but some things took a real leap of faith mm. but really really you know I had to push beyond those limiting beliefs mm. because they were really comfortable to me. Really comfortable. Well, they were comfortably uncomfortable, weren't yeah. they? Yeah, well, it was very familiar. <laughs> it was very familiar. And there was a real part of you that had a passion and a desire and uh, a longing to teach and, and and do this work. And then the other part of you that was as you spoke about in the beginning you know scared to be vulnerable yeah um and so yeah I think for you like you started off in my circle community didn't you that's and, right and I think you then came in to uh, do the one-to-one -one work with me and as part of that you got the freedom program so you've done that's the freedom right program. oh I've done the works <laughs> <laughs> a very diligent student of Miss Charlie Wall <laughs> Well, I yeah, love I put you the for work in. I did. You did I did put the just, work in. I yeah, and, and that's what, you know, like, that's what I wanted you to, to speak to, really. Like, what does it take to actually do the work when all of you wants to retreat and hide and, and stay the same, but the other part of you wants to, you know, explore and follow this intuitive mm -hmm. nudge? What What did that take, you know, for you to to go against what was familiar well there was an almost more discomfort in staying the same but that's not to say everyone is at, at that point and I still think even if I hadn't felt that there was just this ember of light that was enough to guide me with the right direction um and just a real openness openness and curiosity I think um to not, I was sick of the rigidity of and the conditioning of my life, even though it was comfortable and familiar. And I kept seeing other people doing things in life and thinking, how can they do it? And I can't. And then the more I talked to people, the more I realized they were all winging it as well and had to take that leap of faith. I think what helped me was your support, which was unwavering. And just really, really, really listening openly when I did your program and I loved the group. And um, things just resonated and you feel you're not so on your own and that actually this view you've got of the world that everybody's just 
winning at life. And I always looked at that in a career sense. I seem to do all right at being a parent and a friend. And but the the work, the career side, I just it was my sticky thinking. Mm. That was my area of overthinking to the point where it incapacitated me. And then the more I listened to other people, the more I realized, oh, we're all feeling things to some degree like this. But we're meant to change, we're meant to face adversity, we're meant to move forward in life. And actually it's the stagnation that feels more uncomfortable. Children wouldn't get anywhere unless they faced adversity. They wouldn't walk, they wouldn't talk, they wouldn't. There's an inner drive really that we are meant to change, we are meant to grow and we are meant to evolve. Mm -hmm. That got lost in me for a very long time because I was so frightened. And that fear subsided enough that I could then take those steps, if it makes sense. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it makes we you're 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 speaking very beautifully, Lucy. Uh, and that's always. another one for me, isn't it? It's always like I'm not very clever. That's that's another one. You're going to sound stupid. Be clever enough, but um, yeah, there there was enough of me, I think, that wanted to change, but I don't think I would have done it unless I'd had the support group, the support of you, um a way of seeing life can be different and that I don't need to be scared all the time. And actually that that fear wasn't even real time. It it comes from when that just kept getting up me safe, but actually kept me very well, I'm just going to reiterate what you just said because sometimes your sounds um, going, is it going out. That, is it? Is it don't me worry. Not don't, loud enough? No, no, no. You're fine. You're fine. It just keeps going out. But I think that was important what you just said, which was that there was a lot of repeated patterns from childhood that were showing up in your adult self that were keeping you trapped. So I just wanted to make sure that people heard that piece because often this sort of you know longer term work that we embarked on is is also about the body, is also about embodying and being open to seeing how those unconscious patterns and, and body reactions are showing up in your current day. And, and yes. you know, it isn't easy to do this work. No, no. And actually, I've had periods, didn't I, when we were working together where I resorted back to very, very old coping mechanisms that had been dormant for years. Um, and even at the moment, for the first time in a long time, I'm finding little bald patches. And again, I just think it's my body's response to being out there. And so there's still some unconscious fear, um, but it doesn't incapacitate me to the same degree. But I completely agree about um, these feelings that are trapped in the system and um, that were meant to flow and life's meant to flow and yet we get stuck by fear. And, um, and just if I can be sort of a beacon of hope that for others that there is a way out, but it's vulnerability and for sure and word yes it does and and I've as you know I've you know done my own um deep work and resonate resonate a lot with your story and your experiences about life and you know it isn't like right here are your five steps let's fix you we we had to really delve deep sometimes into old programs to get you to see those unconscious okay. in, innocent mm. pr protector, protector parts. parts yeah um so you came down for the day and you taught me a yoga session right so this was I think other than I think I might have got this wrong so tell me if I've got this wrong other than your yoga teacher training was it the first time you'd taught someone or had you taught yes before? yeah and especially someone 
who, um, I mean, I suppose we'd been in touch via Zoom, but not in person. Mm, so this, we'd never met in a, person, had we? No. So there was a whole different dynamic about meeting someone that I really respected and doing something that was still very, very frightening to me for fear of getting it wrong and for fear that uh, yeah that I would fluff it and feel really like Ugh. and other than standing on your fingers by accident <laughs> and nearly breaking them which I've never done since I just say I learned my lesson that day um, it, <laughs> It went really well, didn't it? And um, it gave me the impetus to keep going. That was a lovely day. It was, yeah, it was lovely. And it gave me um, a lot of sense of, yes, this is right. Yeah. So what, what have you gone on to do then? So that day. um so I've been teaching my own class um and then I've been covering a lot of other teachers' classes and from there I've been getting really really good feedback so now I have some classes that I'm teaching in beautiful yoga spaces now that um Are, are, are doing well there's one I've not started yet that starts next month um I found a really beautiful teacher who teaches me which is great and I cover for her a lot um my practice has developed um I feel like I'm on the right path I um a real sense that I'm helping people because I don't just think about it as just the movement of the body. I think people connect energetically on a much more different level that maybe they're not even aware of. Um, it's people, it's light, it's fun. I'm not dogmatic. And I've just allowed myself to just be me, not trying to copy anyone else not doing it in anyone else's way. I mean, I'll get inspiration from people. But when I go into that class, I'm fully me. That's incredible. So, yeah, which I wouldn't ever have dared to be. That's just so incredible, given that, you know, when we started, it was a dream, wasn't it? it was yeah, a and a dream that I just couldn't see how it would come to fruition because I was so locked in those really paralyzing thoughts about myself and now it just feels blowy and a lot of things have come about without much efforting in terms of the work not in terms of the work I do on myself but in terms of not constantly looking at things just letting things evolve in a much more gentler way so that I can not throw myself in so quickly that I then turn and run a mile. You know, I realise I'm still a work in progress, as we all are. And that for me, maybe doing it gently is the way that works better for me. And it feels like that at the moment. I think that way works better for everybody, personally, because yeah. it's you know what you're talking about there is a more feminine way of being and running your own business and you know stressing and forcing and trying to control and managing and um is is not trusting no not trusting at all and actually really scrabbling and eating for something and trying to control is it is exhausting so you 
where you were like you were being asked actually I think to teach weren't you and you were saying... <laughs> <laughs> don't make me Charlie please don't make me <laughs> and he said that eventually it would just come and it wouldn't feel so frightening but I don't know whether that when that point happened. I just know I'm at that point now where as long as I'm prepared for the class and plan it, it, it it's fine. I go in and there's no fear. Whereas, you know, a year, a year and a half ago, I would have had to have a Valium before I told. <laughs> and I'm not even joking. <laughs> yeah I would have been like woozing around that class <laughs> valiumed off my head <laughs> probably uh, not very yogic is it but, um well to, yeah. I don't think there you know like that that's just a way uh if you had have done that it, it would have just been a solution to yeah. fear you know I used yeah. to have a valium <laughs> <laughs> didn't we both Charlie <laughs> um because anything like that any eating disorder valium use alcohol whatever those things are it, it it's a solution it, it wouldn't Just it's not calm it, ourselves, isn't is it? it yogic like does it come under the well I mean I'm lucky enough to work with lots of yoga teachers who are human yeah and and they face the same fears as you as me as as anyone because at the end of the day it doesn't matter what you are passionate about people still have the same insecurities and and sticky points uh, yeah and you know intrusive thoughts so um but you're not using Valium now you're you're going no. <laughs> I don't, I, well you know at the time all it ever did was make me feel like I didn't like I did when I was not anxious but a mm. bit weary. so now that I'm not feeling that level of anxiety I actually don't like the residual woozy feeling of it. Mm. Um, so yeah, I've 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 got some in my bag that the doctor prescribed for me, and I haven't used it for months. Now, when I came out of hospital, I was using it every day, and when I was in hospital, I was using it every day, and they tapered it off and. I still had these horrible moments of anxiety where I would have to take it, but it's been months. Mm. Yeah, no, I think I remember you, you saying on the odd occasion that you'd had one early on in, in, in our work. Yes. And, and so, there was a lot of guilt and shame around that, wasn't there? And there then was. you made me see that, look, like you say, a solution it's a solution and also the brain's going to come up with those solutions that that we heavily relied on like you don't drink anymore do you but you have I've been sober for 16 years yeah, yeah. because I had such a drink problem Ooh, oh I've had a few old battles <laughs> I've arrived to that mate I know. <laughs> hey, listen we'll never be vanilla will we I would say that to my friends well at least we're not vanilla <laughs> um what else what else has opened up for you then like because that's I mean that's huge that that you you know you wanted to be a yoga teacher you were trained as a yoga teacher but you you had this um you know block against moving forward so now you're doing that you're teaching um and I'm doing another tra training course so I'm going to be doing pregnancy teach training as well I have a friend that's going to be opening a hypnobirthing center and she wants me to run the pregnancy yoga side of that um there's loads of things I just the courses I want to do I'm really interested in like epigenetics and the control we have because I had such chronic health con conditions for 20 years of my adulthood and now I feel fitter than I've ever felt. And I see people now at my age who are getting chronic health conditions and 
so I'm really interested in looking into that side and what we can do to prevent that. I am just, I keep saying to myself, I may be chronologically getting older, but biologically I'm staying at 30 years old. So <laughs> that's where I'm staying, even though I'm 47 next month. Oh, this month I am staying at 30 and I'm, I'm just really looking after myself and not finding it hard. I'm a lot more relaxed. Uh, I don't have the rigid role things going on, but I just want to keep learning psychologically, spiritually, emotionally, academically. I feel I'm so less anxious now that it's given me the room to grow and learn because I think when you're in a constant state of fear, your body's not primed to learn. No. And, it, it, and, it, and I used to find it really hard to take things in, which would then feed my, you are not clever, you are stupid um, thoughts. But now I feel, I feel better than I've ever felt. I feel healthier than I've ever felt. I feel less fearful than I've ever felt. Equipped to deal with life a lot better. You never know, I might go on a date one day as well, Charlie. <laughs> Awesome. Maybe I'll open that door at some point, but I think, you know, baby steps. <laughs> well, <Not that. laughs> I think whilst you're, it, it, it's a good, it, it's good that you're taking it each step, like t- tiny steps, baby steps, because you've uncovered huge amounts and unraveled huge amounts uh, about yourself. And um, I think often if we go into new relationships, we can start those sort of self-conscious comparing, especially if they're old and familiar. So I think, yeah, I think you're doing absolutely brilliantly. And when you're ready, of course. Exactly. But I'll know when I'm ready. Yeah. Um, I'm just letting life flow, not forcing things. Yeah. And someone might come along. I mean, you are absolutely wonderful and gorgeous and brilliant company. So, oh, thank you. That means a lot. And right back at you, we have had some giggles, haven't we, over that year? We have. We definitely. Have. <laughs> <laughs> um, what would you say to someone who was, you know, struggling with intrusive thoughts or? Um, feeling like they they're stuck or um you know hiding themselves away what would you say to to them if they were considering either joining the, my circle or working with me in any way what would you say to them well firstly i would say i get it and i really feel and have huge amounts of compassion and empathy towards them because i know how debilitating it is what i would say is take a leap of faith because what you can get from the group from the monthly talks from the sheer amount of time and effort you put in and the the passion that you show it was by far one of the greatest decisions in life and I would tell anyone or um Hell isn't the word, what's the word? Encourage anyone to take that step. It was the best investment. And there's a way out and there's a, a nicer way to live, a gentler way to live. And we all deserve to live a gentle, calm, happy, fulfilled life. Yeah, and we do. And often we don't believe we do deserve that so I, I would encourage anyone just yeah, for sure it's been wonderful life changing thank you and you have been it's been an absolute pleasure and I'm really glad that you're still in my you know circle my smaller community because you are an absolute joy it's been amazing to watch you transform and grow and evolve and start believing in yourself and 
you know see I can see I've always been able to see you just how wonderful you are so it's wonderful to me that you're starting to see that for yourself yeah and and being okay being me because for years I wanted to be anyone other than me anything to that experience me and now I'm getting better at being me and some days actually quite like it so there you go (laughs) which is actually more more often than not yeah brilliant a lot kinder to myself so where do you teach yoga young Lucy so I am teaching um at a place called Narali Yoga in Altrincham I have been doing a lot of cover classes um inhale it's called inhale and it's inhale um <laughs> is it <laughs> clever isn't it um withington baths i teach classes withington bowling club and um a lot of cover classes around the pure gyms around my area so what area are you in so i'm manchester so mm-hmm. south manchester so um or Manchester, Altrincham, Hale area, Stratford. Yeah. And what's your Instagram handle if people want to find you if they're local? Um, what? It, oh God, now you're asking. Can you not find that for me? I'm rubbish at this. <laughs> <laughs> that is what I've got, got to get better at. Uh, no, 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 no. Don't don't end it. with I'm rubbish at. No, I'm <laughs> I'm wonderful at Instagram. Um. Now, are you Lucy? Jones Lucianne. Lucianne. That is me. Yes, that is me. There she is. If you want to follow her. And um, you are an extraordinary teacher. Thank you. And I really appreciate everything you've done. Thank you, Lucy. Thank you so much for your time. (laughs) Thank you for being here. Thank you for trusting me, trusting yourself. Thank you. um, Thing. I really love that you came on to do this interview. Yay! Yay! <laughs> um, I'm going to say goodbye, but you stay there. Um, but thank you so much, Lucy, and thank you everyone who's listened. And if you're listening in the group, um, we'd love to uh, hear any comments or anything that you heard for yourself. Um, if you're not in my group and you're listening to this on YouTube or my podcast, then I will link to my free group, which is where Lucy originally came into a couple of years ago. So um, take care, lots of love to you and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.